Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm the CEO of Esteem Media, and we own magazines like Atlanta Homes and Lifestyle, New England Home, regional design magazines, and we have the Design Bloggers Conference. And we also do the Design Blogger Tours here, and that's how I got to know Neil, and uh, as Neil says, Universal's been an amazing partner and has benefited from his support and understanding of the social web and influencer marketing strategies and so forth. So uh, Neil could be up here talking about this as well as I can. Um, now let me introduce my panelists who were handed to me, so I did not select these four. If they stink, it is not my fault. <laughs> Number two. You, I told you it wasn't going to be exactly the way, right? Number two. As a good moderator, three or four weeks ago, I asked Neil, you'll vouch for this, for everybody's email addresses, so I can get them the questions. And of course, Shayla says to me, no need, we have the whole thing figured out, we'll send you the presentation. <laughs> Which is exactly what happened. But when somebody does that, you are subject to all kinds of interesting questions on the panel from me that are surprises. So be ready. So, okay, so let me introduce these panelists who should have been on the sign instead of me. Um, okay, I'm sorry, guys. It's, you know, electrical stuff. What do you call it? Electronics, right? Okay. Okay, so right here is Ellen Valensich. Aaron. Aaron Valensich. That's what I said. <laughs> said. I'll be Ellen, too. <laughs> With the, the guys, we can't pronounce last names. He screwed mine up. I'm going to do that. Okay. I didn't say Valencia, yeah, Valencia, yes, and I did come up to you two times and ask you how to pronounce it before, and I got it wrong again. It's, that's why it's Aaron V. Aaron V. Aaron v. Okay, so Aaron, Aaron's an amazing entrepreneur. There's a book in here about her bio, so I'm going to give you what I think are some of the more interesting things to me that I'd want to hear about. Um, she's basically an entrepreneur. What's up? Did I do something wrong? Okay. She's basically an entrepreneur, right? Um, I mean, she started very young. She accomplished like a million things by the time she was 24. We can go through the list. I think everybody knows of your accomplishments in that regard. She's an interior designer and a real estate developer. Uh, she, her real estate projects included uh, this amazing house. What was it, with uh, Bellsberg Architects or something? It was an Architectural Digest, I think. And uh, you've been on TV in... Uh, with uh, Nate Berkus, right, on the 12... NBC's American Dream Home. NBC's American Dream Home. She's just like this amazing, amazing woman who's made a career at a very early age of getting out in front and being aggressive and a great panelist today for, um, for our, our uh, little session here. If you want to know all the specifics, there's a book online. You can read it. It has her bio. Just Google her and you'll find it. Okay, and the woman I do, I do know who sent me the bio, who sent me the, the stuff is Shayla, right? And I know Shayla for a few years, and I walked up to her just now. I go, hi, I don't think I know you. Who are you? Because she always wears her hair like this, right? And it's like, you know, everybody at my conference says, you should put our Instagram photos on here. I said, no way, because they're 17 years old. It's your best picture ever, and I'll never recognize you in person. So why would I do that? So anyway, Shayla... Uh, is really one of the South's most acclaimed designers and tastemakers, to be very frank. And uh, she's just an approachable designer. Um, her firm has uh, a, a very, very interesting intake process that's extremely rigorous. And uh, she has an amazing sense of color, scale of color, slight variations of color. Um, she's just an amazing design professional who has also figured out how to use the social web and so for that reason, I'm really glad that she's here too, even though she sent me the deck already done. Third, right? Natalie. You know, oh, am I, I'm not, who's doing that for me? Oh, <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Natalie. Natalie, Riddell or Riddell? Riddell. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> Natalie um, is the commander in chic, as many people know Natalie, right? She's also the hashtag lady, right? What do you, what's the real reference? Not the hashtag lady. The golden hashtag. The golden hashtag. I've always seen the golden hashtag. I didn't really know it was Natalie until I met Natalie, and then I realized, yes, you should own the golden hashtag. And um, she... Uh, <laughs> we share a seat. There you go. And uh, she's a Florida native, went to FSU, I think. 
and um, lives with our husband and a Cavalier King Charles. Scarlet. What's your dog's name? Scarlett O'Hara. Scarlett O'Hara. Did she ever get the hashtag? Oh, she, she has is, the hashtag. She is the hashtag. Okay. Um, but uh, follow her in the golden hashtag online because she has also moved to the forefront of design influencer using the social web in really impeccable ways. And forget the last name on this one. But <laughs> one of the brightest stars in Nashville. I'm going to try my best. You're going to do great. No. <laughs> right? Is, and I, I never met you before today, did I? Okay. Lori Paranjapi? Pa, pa, say it. Say it. Paranjapi. Paranjapi. Same thing. Listen, I grew up in Brooklyn. I moved to Boston. We don't talk in any of those places. So, um, But Lori... Um, uh, has a de design firm called Mrs. Paranjape <laughs> Design and Interiors. Mrs. Who is this Mrs.? That's so cool. And it stands out. And it's a very interesting thing. I'm going to ask you about that at, at a certain point. Uh, and Lori's clients are drawn to her like really, really clean design sensibility. Uh, she does all over the country. Uh, she is also a major social media influencer. And influencers. So these four people are absolutely uh, four of the really cool people to have here at this point. And now I don't have to say much more except let you listen to them. But so you guys sent me a deck, right? You gonna? You, yeah, I need to click now. You give me a minute clicker. Okay. And um, yeah, well, these are all there. Yeah. So here. You can see, Aaron, you follow Aaron, be one of 45,000 people to follow her. Go ahead. Um, Shayla, Natalie, and Mrs. Paranjape. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Paranjape. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you know, we run the Design Bloggers Conference, and we've devoted, we devoted three full days to dissecting and like that, every little piece of the thing. But here, the focus is primarily going to be on Mark Zuckerberg's businesses, okay? Instagram and Facebook. Why? Because he was just on TV, and, you know, it's a good thing to talk about. No, because you guys identified those two platforms as important platforms to talk about. Right? Before I ask you about any of the platforms, I'd like for each of you, because of the amazing talent that you have as a design professional, why social media came into your life or you chose to go into it, and how powerful or not it's been for you. I'd just like to hear from each one of you. Can we start with you, Erin? Sure. Okay. I mean, I think it's, it's understood widely that Facebook and Instagram are the most visual, and you get kind of two demographics of people. The Older demographic is typically on Facebook, the mid to younger on Instagram, and then when you go down from there, you get to Snapchat. I have not started snapping yet. I find it very frustrating. <laughs> but I love Instagram, and I do Facebook. Um, I think it's, it, we're beyond the part of you know, the time where you just you have to, like especially if you're a visual artist, like we all are, and I'm sure everyone in this room is. Um, it's free media, you know? so why wouldn't you put a little effort into it and make it work for you? And can you think of the most meaningful development that ever happened to you using social media that advanced your strategy? So I'm probably one of the few, because I know a number of, of the ladies up here get a, a lot of lead gen from Facebook or Instagram. I don't know that I've ever directly gotten something like business-wise from it, but I use it to leverage all of my other initiatives. And so having that following, having something that beautifully represents your work, um, people go to it and reference it, and I think that for me has been very powerful because you can create whatever you want on it. You know, you control your brand on social media, and so if you're doing it well, then you can leverage that into other things. Great. Natalie, Thank same you. question. I mean, um, Shayla. Um, so my social media is all about color, and whether it's on Facebook or it's on Instagram, and I feel like it's a great place that I can show my authentic self. And I think being authentic on social media is quite important because you are showing your brand that way. 
um, we got very serious about it a couple years ago, and that's when we started building our followers. And I kind of make it my, I mean, it's my daily routine. It's a passion. And um, we just integrated it into basically everything we do. Right, Shelby? <laughs> Everything we do. She's the boomerang queen. Um, so we're, we um, mainly actually concentrate on stories, and then everything else is very compiled in a very strategic way. But our stories kind of show who we are, and it helps um, us relate to future clients as well as to brands that we want to partner with. Yeah, you are that one. Hi. Am I on? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Natalie. Um, Thank you, everybody, for coming. That's awesome. It's really good to see everybody. Um, I guess I kind of had Facebook just because everybody had Facebook whenever that happened. And um, I got into Instagram, I would say, definitely late in the game, considering when a lot of, a lot of people started. Um, it was actually three years ago, this market, when and I got on one of the shuttles from the mall parking lot and the girls on the bus were talking about Instagram, and I said, "What is it? What's an Instagram?" And so I thought, "Well, if they're talking about it for market, I probably should figure it out." So I like downloaded it on the shuttle on the way here and tried to start like figuring it out. And um, that's kind of how I started doing it. But then mostly, like, I my main thought then was, "Okay, this is fun stuff." Like, I, my mentality was like. I want to show this to my mom when, like, when I get home. And my best friend who couldn't come, she's got to see this artwork, you know. So that's how it kind of started for me. Um, but then it's fun. It's fun. I mean, for me, Instagram is a good fit because it's visual. It's kind of playful. Uh, it's quick. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a good fit. To me, it's user-friendly. And it. I feel like to do well on any social media, you have to find, you, nobody's good at all of it. I just don't believe anybody's really good at all of it. If you are, you don't do anything else. You know, I mean, I think to be leaving, leading a normal life, you'll find you find your niche, and I think it's okay to let go of the parts of social media that you don't love and enjoy the parts of it that you do because it does need to be sustainable. And I, I always have grand. I'm going to do better on Twitter. And I have never done better on Twitter. <laughs> that lasts for a half a second. So I've said, okay, you know what? Don't beat yourself up about it. You know, just you, you enjoy Instagram, so do that. And um, I would say now Instagram has grown for me. Well, all these, all these people here are huge, important people in my life now that I would have not. I cry. Every time we do a panel, I cry. I'm just like it happened twice on the last one. I get all like teared up. So let's we're, get it out of the way in the first part. <laughs> get it, get it, get it out of the way. <laughs> no, but the relationships that have come from it are incredible, and they are real, concrete relationships. And I have real, concrete business that's generated from it, um, and and doors that are open. And I think sometimes even just leverage. Um, and actually, in my design business, I use Instagram all the time. I'm not even sure it's sometimes not the first place I go to source product. Like, I love to find new artists or, um, you know, I'll put in, like, you know, concrete furniture and find some cool guy in Arkansas who's building concrete furniture better than anybody I've ever seen. And so that, that to me, is really fun. And I feel like that kind of is loving on the creative community and supporting artisans and like for for my client the value is, is they have something nobody else has um, because I've been able to curate it and there's a story behind it so it, I often shop from Instagram that was my long my long short answer that's okay and, you have a short bio thank you <laughs> I'm I'm Lori Perron Jepe <laughs> Um, Instagram is my only social media. I have Facebook, but I don't use it. It's there in case somebody wants to go look at it, but it's not really there. Um, but Instagram has completely transformed my business. It's my, it's my um, only marketing that I do. I don't spend anything on marketing um, otherwise. And um, it's what we refer to as my business. It is business in the front and a party in the back. And on my front page, on my Instagram, if you look through, it's I've tried really hard to make it a really curated portfolio of my work. In stories, 
it is a total shit show. <laughs> and you're going to see the whole thing that happens and how it's happening and how it's going down and who the people are that I'm with and how we're making this happen and how we progress through a day or what happened that was really great that day or what happened that wasn't great or how something in business has been successful or how something in business is killing me or all of those sorts of things. And I really feel like I'm having a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation with the people who might be watching that non-sensory every night from my home office or my mobile office where I do my stories. Um, but it's really a way to connect and it is my um, number one stream for new business. So 95% of my business comes from Instagram. So they either... How do you know that? Um, well, because they tell me. So, so they'll, they'll DM me, they'll send um, inquiries through my website, which they find my website from my Instagram homepage, and I'll, I get design inquiries 100% um, of the time say, I love your Instagram, and I would love for you to build me a house that looks like <coughs> the one you did here, and they'll name it, and they'll name my hashtag. They'll say, I love what you did at the Nash, hashtag Nash Parade of Homes, or I love what you did at hashtag Campbell Quarters. And I would like for you to build that for me. So those hashtags, no joke. Like that's real business. We sit down and we really find what's clever or naming it or all of that. It is branding. I am branding. It feels fun and it feels playful, but this is pure business. So I think one of the things you see is that, um, you know, all of the ladies have said that Instagram has to be as much fun and authentic as sitting in a room with them and understanding who they are and how they're expressing themselves. And one of the things that's really interesting is that, you know, Instagram is the most powerful social media platform today available to any marketer because of engagement rates. Instagram's engagement rate is 1.7%, while Facebook's engagement rate is 0.1%. If you do an algorithm and you take the total follower, the 700 million on Instagram and the one point whatever billion on Facebook, Instagram is the most powerful social platform on the web. And it used to be that if somebody wanted to find out about you, they'd go to Google. But today, they go to Instagram. And what do they do when they go to Instagram? They look at your front page. And what, why is that important? Because each one of your posts is no, not just an individual one-off post. It is contributing to a palette that has to represent your sensibility and look good alongside everything else. So really, really important development in the industry. But let me ask Lori first this time, okay? Lori Pronchpeck. Oh, you nailed it. Ah. <laughs> Great. Lori, um, like, how, how do you go about, like, what's your tactic? Do you have a plan at the beginning of the week? How many posts? When? What? When I started, when I committed to it, which was probably about three years ago when I really committed to, to making it work for me and, and building the following, I decided to do two posts a day that were authentic to my uh, design aesthetic and reflective of my work um, because it is a, it's a live portfolio. So there cannot be something that's off or there cannot be, if it's a progress, now I pay for progress photos. I think they're beautiful. I do a lot of construction projects, and there are so many phases in construction that I think we're never going to see this again. Once this next layer goes in, this framing phase is gone, and it's gorgeous. So I started paying to have that done because that's, my projects take a year and a half. So it's hard to get a lot of fresh content. Um, but I decided to you know, do more photography so I could have more content for my page. But I committed to two posts a day and I couldn't sustain it for longer than two years. So now I do one a day. Um, I wish I could tell you that I plan it a week or two weeks or a month in advance, but I don't. Um, and I have to repeat content. I try to not repeat content that's less than three or four months old. Um, and the more interaction, the better. But, but I do pay attention to what you like. And you like exterior shots, wide exterior shots you like. Uh, close-up vignettes, you hate them. You're like, I will not like that. I will not double tap on that coffee table book. I won't do it. Um, and you like wide shots kitchens, wide shot living room, wide shot master. You, the, so when I say you, I mean if you are the ones here because you want to 
get a handle on your social media. That's my experience, um, is what people want to see is freaking perfect shots with symmetry and clean, perfect lighting, no fuss, no muss. That's what works for me and my brand. I don't know that it's the same experience for everyone, but that's what works for me. And then they call me and hire me and say, that picture, I want that kitchen. I'm like, okay, you can have it, but we're going to have to do it one better because we can't just do the same one again. Um, but that's, that is how it works for me is a very, very clear trans, uh, it's a, it's a transaction that happens when they see it. I'm totally the opposite of this. So it's probably a good, good answer. You know, you know, I mean, mine is the opposite of that. Um, wide open, real, um, very few, like, I, I'm a higher photographer for my projects. I don't share those nearly as often as I'll share. Probably I broke my heel in a grate where I fell out there picking out paint colors or who knows. Or I went live and hit my head and you'll see that whole footage. It's um, like there's really no telling. I tried to do the planning app one time where you scheduled your post and literally I scheduled it and it was supposed to go out three hours later and it went out and I was like, oh, I can't believe I would have said that. I've come so far since then. <laughs> I've grown so much in these last three hours. Ew, I, I'm never doing that again. So I quit that. That literally lasted one, one, one post, one traumatizing post. Um, I, I don't plan it because it takes the fun out of it. I just, it's just kind of just the golden hashtag and whatever we bump into. And I, I do a question I do. I mean, I say that and I take heart and, and I do love the details and I do try and get good photos. Um, more, more than that, I really, really try and ask myself on every post, um, how is this going to help? people that are looking at it. I mean, maybe not every single post, because you'll re say, who is she trying to help with that? Well, we don't know. Um, but I really try and think, even if it's something funny, but that it somehow says, okay, that was kind of a funny post, but really what she was saying is she used contrasting welt on that chair and blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, I try and, even if it's kind of in a funny way, I have found out, they all told me on my last panel, oh, your theme is funny. So I'm like, oh, I didn't even know my theme was funny, but now I've realized I think maybe it probably is. But um, I do always try and help, like, okay, is this funny? Or is this, like, I'm having a kind of a crappy day today. I give myself a pep talk, and sometimes I share that pep talk because I needed to hear it. Um, or just some insight, or just, I always just try and think, is this going to add value? Like, what I want to see this? Am I going to get something out of this? Not just necessarily, like, here's a picture of me with somebody fabulous. Like, not that you don't, not that that doesn't matter too, but really you want to help, help, answer questions or whatever. Would anybody like to contribute to that? Do you have any different strategies or... Okay, so what we do is we really try to keep it curated, but I'm like you are. I mean, I try to plan, and I do, but sometimes you just, you yeah. have a day where you just feel like going another direction, mm -hmm. and um, I will say for me, the vignettes are not as great, but anytime I do tabletop, I'm getting likes out. I beat it. It's out of the wazoo. It's like crazy. I think tabletop is hot right now, and we're writing a book on entertainment design and people are following that. That's that's really where my strategy has gone in that direction is entertainment design. Even though I am an interior designer, I kind of found my niche. Um, so I think it's really important that we all find our niche and we all find our voice and we're authentic, as I said earlier, because sometimes we get wrapped up in what Natalie's doing or what Lori's doing or what you know someone else that we see is doing, and we really need to find what's important to us and special to us and find our voice. Do you ever share other people's work? Why would you and when do you? I think it's nice to share other people's work, you know, and I think that also as you're casting a wide net when you're trying to find followers or let followers find you, if I am hashtagging a beautiful room by Jean-Louis Denois or someone else that I have a big design crush on, then I would imagine that people that also like that would then find that and find me reposting it. I mean, that's how I find a lot of things, right, as you kind of go down the rabbit hole of who posted and where to come from. Um, and I think it's great to share other people's work that you admire as long as you're, you know, not passing it off as your own, which 
some people try to do. Um, but I do try to post more of my own and, you know, photos of our furniture. I have a 90-piece furniture collection that I um, craft all in Los Angeles. Um, but I think you kind of get, I don't know, I get more inspired by other people's stuff that I haven't seen before than looking at my own time and time again. So I probably should post more of my own and, and go more with Lori's strategy when I want to start capturing that audience that would hire me as a designer. Um, but I have many different businesses, so I kind of take different strategies on my Airbnb style page, and I'm going to be having one now strictly for our furniture line, um, and then potentially strictly for all of the other licenses the, together as one. Would the different strategies for each business make you share your work more on one product line than another? Yeah, I think I'm going to do an Air and V to just the furniture and probably then all the licensed goods, you know, because I have a line with Baldwin Hardware now. Um, Creative Touch Rugs are soft launching here at Suites at Market Square. Um, but particularly for the furniture, because I'm in eight showrooms around the country, the D&D &D in Boston, um, at the design centers and such. So to give that line a little more of its own flavor and share more shots at the factory and all that kind of stuff that I think on a furniture page makes sense but on my page they're not necessarily like pretty enough to go into my feed but yet they're cool and interesting if you're into furniture. Got it. Anybody concur or think differently about this in terms of sharing? I, well I agree entirely but yes we do need to credit that's very important and I think spreading the love is important so on Saturdays that's when we do it we we find um, some some products that we like it's either products or another design that we feel um, is aligned with our brand and we share so sharing Saturday yeah, yeah I, oh I love to share I mean if you're crediting I think it's a cool way to each other up and celebrate. I mean, like you're like I'll see something you post. And I'm dying. I'm like, y'all, everybody gotta see this, you know, or what's something y'all do. I mean, if if it's all, it's how you do it, you know. And I mean, you don't ever want to seem like you're using somebody else's work. So if you're crediting, I think it's a great way to do it. And and I and again, like if you find a if I use an artist in a project that I know not many people know, I think, oh my gosh, this. This guy needs, people should know about this guy, you know. Well, and the other part that I have found frustrating be on the other end is designer friends might share and not say where they get stuff. And then you feel like, shoot, can I, will you send me that artist, you know. And so I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and answer all the questions that people might have before I post it. And that means crediting, you know, kind of sourcing and crediting Honestly, that's to save myself time, you know, and also to have people not be frustrated that they can't get. That, that little topic yeah. was actually something I saved in my stories. It was something I talked about, about as a designer, what do you um, share? What sort of information do you share and what information do you keep for yourself? Um, and I find this to be a little difficult to navigate. For here at Market, for instance, if we go into a showroom and we find something that's just phenomenal and we can't wait to use it on a design project, I'm not sure I want to tell you all where I am. I feel like we spend you know, time away from home, we spend money, we invest in these trips to learn and I'm doing this for my business to use on projects so I get a lot of questions I'll post a photo and they'll say where's the rug where's the table who's the light what's the art what's her name where can I buy it how much is it where'd you find it and it's really flattering but it's also we work really hard to find things that aren't everywhere and to just share it all is really goes against the building of my own business. So it's a line that I try to walk. And if I buy a vintage rug for a client and the client paid me to find it, and then I tell you where I found it, why did they pay me? They, they paid for that information. So sharing, if I post someone's work, if I see something and it just blows my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, look what... Natalie Riddell did, and isn't it spectacular? And this is her photographer's name who shot that beautiful photo. But if it's a project of mine, I can't give everything away. And I try to let people know that I'll, I can tell you almost everything, but not everything. Some of that I feel like is for the trade. Mrs. Branch, can I ask you a question? Please do, um, Adam. What? <laughs> <laughs> what um, 
Is that a timing issue? Would you share that after the project's complete and you have professional photographers? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. The, my Everything you see is client work. Someone owns that house. And I did a show house. I spilled everything. I did a tour. I did a live for an hour and was like, this is this and this is this and this is this and this is where you can get it and this is the skew and this is the whole deal. But if I'm showing my client's project that they just finished shelling out what they have shelled out for me to build and curate and style and furnish for them, if I shared that with you, that to me feels like a betrayal of the client and 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 that's bad business, I think, for me. So, so where do you draw the line on uh, putting your portfolio in the before and after pictures or we're down at market and look at some of the cool things that we found? I'll show you cool stuff, but if it's if it's something that's kind of off the beaten path or or not necessarily something that I want to share the brand, you know, some, I was in a showroom and I saw this really cool thing, books, I put it in my stories, um, and she was like, oh, make sure you tag us. I was like, now why would I tag you? I just found you. And now if I tag you and then everybody buys the books, I can't even use them in time for me to be the one who showed it done the first time. So it, it, it isn't about, you know, I believe in the whole philosophy of, you know, I don't believe in competing. We can all win, you know, we, and we can all win. But telling the tale before the client ever takes the delivery on the item, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't work in my personal yeah. business model. Yeah. Um, but you can ask another question. Sorry. How are you? How are you? I'm all right. I can't pronounce the name, but. I know people wait so they can get their stuff published. If if something's being held for publication, then of course I then I can't share it. But right. but that's it. And that's changing. That's that's kind of that is old guard. But honestly, a lot of the ma I've seen magazines put photos on the cover that I saw on Instagram a year before, right. and that was the cover of Interiors magazine. You know, uh, last summer I was like, ah, what? <laughs> Seriously? So it's changing. Yeah. I mean, if you want, you know, if you're shooting for El Decor and such, they're going to come shoot it anyway. So no. You know, it'll be and, a different and, shot. And you're gonna you, there's like that much of the country gets in those magazines, you know. So, um, but I agree with Lori. I mean, I don't, I don't post a lot of my like best vendors or secret finds, you know. I post a lot of stuff I, I like. There's tons of stuff I like, but and I, I might I might give true. props to a brand and say, you know, hey Universal, you are killing at this market. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. But if it's something I intend to use on a project, right. I'm almost certainly not going to tell you where it is and where I found it um, before delivering it to the client who's paying me to find it for them. Did you want to say something now? I have one more question about that. Okay. So when you choose not to respond because you're really great at engagement, we call it Um, I do both. Sometimes I'll like, sometimes I'll answer. Sometimes people are like, seriously, seriously, seriously. What's the name of the window? Like, tell me the window. What's the window? What's the window? What's the window? Um, but I'll I'll try to either defer and say, you know, sorry, that was something special I picked up for a client, or we had it custom made, or we, I invented it myself. <laughs> and if you hire me, you can have it too. But I, I'd like to um, keep moving along for a second, if that's okay. And I'd like to kind of give another side of this discussion, because when social media was just getting going and we were all kind of trying to figure our way and help other people figure their way, there was this issue when bloggers say, why should I, sh why should I share all of my design expertise free everywhere when people, you know, uh, when I, I make money that way? And you know, and those of you who know me for a long time, I hearken back to something that's very close to me, The Grateful Dead, where I've gone to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Grateful Dead shows, which is why I can't pronounce names very clearly. <laughs> but secondly is that 
the Grateful Dead had a philosophy. And it was very interesting because the Grateful Dead were the founders of content marketing, if you think about it. Because the Grateful Dead, while everybody else in the record business was saying, I'm not going to let you tape my song or trade my song or record my song because i got to sell you an album, the Grateful Dead said, no, our economic engine is concerts. Like your economic engine is projects, or it's selling furniture, or it's selling your new book, or it's um, whatever, right? Selling design projects. The idea of giving away information once you're finished with it has an amazing impact on your brand and on your following because people want you not because of I want to hire you to find me the right light. I need you to create my experience. I like your sensibility. I can't do the work. I don't know how to be a designer. I can't manage a project. I need you. Just the other side of it. So all of the points made are exactly right on. You've got to watch. But once you're done with it, and the ability to share it, your best work is real, and give it away for free is your best advertising, I would say. OK, now, going to the future, did you want to say something well, to that? I did. Yeah. I, well, I did just want to say, um, I'm, I'm prob I, I, it's, it's oftentimes case specific, because you know, there are clients that care more. Some of my clients are like, e, when are you posting my kitchen on, my, on Facebook? You know, I'm like, oh, OK, we're not done yet, but OK. <laughs> um, and so some of my clients are like fired up to be anything, you know, be a part of whatever is getting shared. Um, and I have other clients that I know aren't, you know, and, and I have that conversation with them. Right. Um, and so that makes a huge difference in it. Um, but I will say on the flip side, one thing I have felt like is even if the, somebody knows that fabric, nobody's going to use that fabric like I'm going to use that fabric in that room. And that fabric could look flipping amazing in a dining room on panels and it's going to look really cool on these chairs and a sunroom when I do it in this whole other context. So that there's part of me this that feels like it, here right. have it like let's all have all the information and this you know I, so and I'm like I'm excited to see what you're going to do with the fabric you know right. and here's the other deal like it's there's the internet you can figure out which fabric it is you know I mean at some point I mean not not all the like really curated hard stuff but I mean paint colors I love to share paint colors paint colors and you are a nice girl you're a nice girl and I'm gonna work till I die because I give it all away but um and, and you'll be retired but I'm gonna come see you I'm gonna come see you <laughs> okay okay can, wait can but we, can I say this you, last I'm waiting thing. for you Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm waiting you to stop talking so you can start talking again. Okay. Um, the other thing that one thing that's happened for me and my business is if I use curry for lighting, I tag curry in my post. And that, that, when, that, that, I'm talking about when I first started out and didn't know what the heck fire I was doing. And after I used him a couple times and I tagged him a couple times, one day I get a little thing, Curry tagged you in a post and I'm like, something must be wrong with my Instagram. I'm like, oh my gosh, Curry tagged me in a post and they shared my picture because I used it in that room. And I gained a bunch of followers and I gained a bunch of confidence because I thought, holy cow, that was kind of cool. And I was doing it to, you know, kind of promote them, but it's like you reach across the table, even as a tiny little nobody to Curry, and then they kind of reach back, and I actually found that's probably the best, that is probably the most, the most aggressive growth I've had on Instagram has come from that. And that the brands that I've used in projects, I share them, and then some of them, then it's been, then Benjamin Moore shares it, you know, and like some of the other, and so if you're doing good work, and if you come from a brand strategy, like if I, if I were producing a lamp, and I saw designers out there use my lamp. And what the, what do I want more than that? To feel like people in the design industry that have a lot of style are specifying the product that I'm making, and here and then creating me uh, free content, free content, like uh, th that's a no-brainer. So they are happy, and if you can create that relationship, I think that's a really cool thing. So it, that's a different, that's kind of a different take on it. Can I talk with my hands? <laughs> I'm gonna hit you. Okay, I'm wait, wait. When, you, wait. when you start talking with your hands, can I ask she, the next she, question? Not, bye. Okay. So the, the the social web changes. The platforms change. Zuckerberg was dragged into Washington, asked questions. All kinds of things changing. 
When you think about next year, are there any challenges with the social web that are new for you that you feel a lot of people are going to have to tackle? Are there any new developments in, in, in the social platforms? Aaron, do you have any thoughts on that? I have no thoughts on that. Good. I'm glad I called on you. <laughs> <laughs> Shayla does. Okay. Well, I think it's getting, it's, getting, <laughs> it's getting tougher. I think that the algorithms are changing, and I think that, that Instagram is making it just a little bit harder for us. And I know Lori's had some things to say about that in her stories, and I've really enjoyed your stories, by the way. Uh, so I, I think that the story engagement actually helps us in our algorithm. So I think it's very important that we, that we participate in stories. And in stories, you need to find your voice as well. So for Lori, she, she has this, um, like it's like she's having this one-on-one -on -one talk with you. I mean, you feel like, I feel like I'm right across the table from you, and we're just having a girl yeah, talk. Just it's just, but it's, it's the sweetest way that you do it. And then Natalie, she runs over a bush. I mean, <laughs> I'm like. That was I, two weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> but I literally spit out my water. I was having lunch with my husband, and I spit out that water. He said, what happened? I said, Natalie ran over a bush, and he said, he said, on live? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yes. And I my husband, my do you know he watches all of your... Oh, bless his heart. He is one of your best followers. Awesome. I love you. <laughs> and, and, then, and then for me, I love to promote brands. I really do. So I'm, I'm like good. you are. But I don't like to promote things ahead of time. I do agree that we've got to be careful in how we do it. Right. So, but I, I, I want to go back to stories. I think stories are important, and I think that's the thing that we need to concentrate on this year in order to get our numbers and up. And you feel it helps your algorithm and have more exposure to different followers? Absolutely. Okay. I think Instagram likes stories. Yeah. Right. And whatever, right. whatever Instagram likes. Instagram right. favors you right. know, whoever's behind the curtain and who is proactively changing everything that goes on behind the curtain all the time but right. I do I, and you can you can tell you know if you're on Instagram now and the little head pops up and says look what's new on Instagram you have the little circle and then you touch it and it's like now you can do and I couldn't even understand the most recent thing focus it's like I can't I can't portfolio. figure it out is that what it is but if that like if, if Insta whatever Instagram is promoting you figure okay well clearly they'd like us to maybe start trying that so that to me is always sort of an obvious way to do it and from from what I understand and have purpose per, personally noticed they've gotten to where they want more stories and so your head pops up if you're doing stories um, and then on top of that want more live and so I think the more you kind of go with their flow it does just pop you up back to the surface and I do think that's definitely a trend as a teaching point for those of you who are looking to build your Instagram audience or your social media audience, I think what they are demanding more and more of us for the algorithm is we must interact with you and you must interact with us. So if you're out there and you're talking and no one's talking back, or if I put a photo up and there's no comments, then it's getting pushed lower and lower in its value and your feed is dropping. So when I post a photo and there are a hundred comments, I'll get comments all day long then. It stays high in the algorithm. So as you are investing in your own businesses, talk to your friends, say, hey, just posted. Or send a DM, get a DM group and say, hey guys, I just posted, get six accounts just like you. And say, I post in the morning and then send them a, a, an emoji that says I just posted. So we're I'm behind the scenes working that algorithm. I'm yep. working against it. Yeah. So trying to get so these com comment groups, it really does work. Right. I know this is one of those little mysteries of Instagram, but it's yeah. real and it does work. Yeah. So I'm going to just keep moving on just so we can get some of the questions in. And I'm, I mean, this could go on for years, this conversation, right? But the next question really is, if you had to answer this question, my followers consist of, how would you answer that? I've never paid attention. Okay, so you're marketing to whoever. Yep. Do you have any thought of who they are? 
Um, I mean, I obviously see, I, I am not the obsessive Instagram social media person, okay. clearly. I don't read all my comments. I don't direct message. If you direct message me, I probably won't see it. So please don't email me like a normal person. Um, okay, I, just, that's fair. I, I don't engage that way. I look, I heart, I keep going. I rarely comment unless it's something like super, super important and I want that person who who I know right. reads them because some, some, a lot of my friends are like obsessed with every comment they get and right. I'm just not, you know, yeah. so I do it because I enjoy it, but, but, I, no, but really that's right. I, I anybody... know I do. I, I look at it. I look at my metrics. I look at, right. I look at all of that. I have a so business account. People? I don't know if you have a business account, but mine's a business account. My, yeah. my following is, um, ages 25 to 35. It's largely female. There's 13% male is my following. Um, they're in Nashville, New York, Los Angeles, Dallas, London, like are I they have, members of the trade or are they consumers? They are both. They're both. They are, they are designers and design lovers. Is and brands. And br tons of brands, tons which of brands. on that little topic, I do tag my brands. I just don't necessarily say what it is because it feels too revealing. And yeah. the brand re, you know, the brand reposting is effective. But but that is my audience, and that is also happens to be my client base. Also, very young, twenties and thirties. Mine clients. are brands and designers and then potential clients. So we do get work off of Instagram, but we have a huge designer following and brand following. Right. And, and I, I think the most important thing to getting engagement is to comment back. I mean, because right. they do want to know that you're a real person and that you care about what they about about what they're saying and a lot of them will engage and they'll they'll expect you to keep engaging back and especially on stories i'm finding a lot of them are engaging back on stories and um you know just wanting to kind of talk about what we're doing for the day in our boomerangs you know <laughs> I, that for I mean, me really. for me too which is it's really fun you know and it, it, i am I, I don't know that I'll ever find a place when I'm not amazed by what people take to on Instagram because I'll have something where I'm thinking, this post is going to be so, I mean, like I'm about to break Instagram. Like it's about to break because this picture is so good and that is so funny what I'm about to say. Ready, go. And it's like crickets. I'm like what? The, did I not hit post? Like what? And then, you know, two hours later I look back and I'm like, I've lost it. I've lost my touch, you know. And then I'll post my dog, who, who is a blurred, crappy photo of Scarlett. And for, <laughs> like, time. it almost breaks, it breaks Instagram. And I'm like, you cannot be Never serious. Tell, right? I worked so hard on that pretty kitchen, you know. Right. But main, mainly my point. That's a little bit extreme, but actually those both of those things have happened. Can I ask you a different question then? Mm -hmm. um, because I don't can't think of another, a better person to kick off this conversation with. What do you think of hashtags, and do you use them, and how? Well, it's funny you asked. <laughs> no. Um, hashtags are tricky. Um, actually, the, the golden hashtag for me came because when I very first started doing Instagram, I had no flipping idea what I was doing. Um, I found a nail polish color by Sally Hansen, Commander in Chic, and Somebody had said, you should start a blog, and I'm not, I'm like, I don't want to start a blog, but then I thought, Commander-in-Chief, that'd be a cute blog. Okay, fine. I'll be, I'll just self, I'm self-appointed, <laughs> self-appointed, um, and then I thought, well, that's kind of snappy. But basically, my son was like, Mom, you're bossy, and you do think you're kind of fancy, so it kind of, I don't hate it for you. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I started putting hashtag Commander-in-Chief on all my posts, and then then I started thinking, oh my gosh, you could do like funny punchlines and all that, but like, how many of these can you do? Okay, well, a lot. We all know a lot. Too many obnoxiousness. Um, and then I wasn't doing it long. And at this point, not caring, really, not really noticing anybody would notice. And then somebody would say something like, uh, <laughs> what's with all the hashtags? And I'm like, oh, am I overdoing the hashtag? And I'm like, you know what? Wait a second. This like Instagram is new. There wasn't you can't like nobody took a course on Instagram. So the guy that commented on that, like this is all new. I'm learning. He's learning. Like I'm gonna just I'll put however many flipping hashtags Instagram will let me put if I feel like they're relevant and I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Um, and then I found a, a number sign in a thrift store and I thought, you know what? Well, damn it! <laughs> I'll just celebrate it, Mister. You know. And I that's where she kind of started. And then I liked gold sparkly things. Sparkly? I sure did. I sure did. 
Because she, we went to Vegas. She went to Vegas, so we kind of dolled her up, and we yeah. never went back. But, but do, do you use any other strategies in, in for hashtags or? I use hashtags. I'm like the dud because I'm all business. Like I'm all like, Arr. but I, but I, but I hashtag for the things that I might search myself or the things that pertain to the image that you're looking at. So if it's you know a horse farm, you're gonna get. Number one is always going to be hashtag interior design, hashtag design, hashtag interiors, hashtag Nashville designer, hashtag horse farm, hor you know, all of those sorts of things. Because when I'm looking, for instance, if I'm looking for a, a new kitchen and I want to do black, I put in Instagram's search bar, hashtag black kitchens. So I put that there. So when you put that in, you find me. Okay, sorry to hog. Um, I have I have noticed one thing about as far as doing the algorithm and popping back up. If your hashtag is so general, you know how now if you search hashtags, it puts the top nine, you know, ice cream. Not that I search that. Not, I'm not that I haven't. Um, top nine best posts in the history of ice cream on Instagram, and those pop up. Under those nine, it's the most recent post. Well, a whole lot of people post about ice cream. So unless you are in the elite nine you're going to be up on that screen for a half a second. So I have actually found better success. And well, you're, that's a good example, like a black kitchen. You're not just kitchen. Um, that you, and I also try and do like you may do interior design, which has a million of those hashtags, but then go um, like whatever, yeah, home or staging. Or and then national, you know, go, go have kind of do some. Tail. And Water then all the way down to equestrian chic, you right. know, because there might be 10, and you right. may very well be at the top if anybody right. checks that. And when I do post those, I get followers who have exactly. Exactly. Right. exactly. right. Shayla, did you want to say the last thing on this? Well, and I think if you, if you do too generalized of hashtags, then you're not going to get what you're looking for. Right. I, I found that the sweet spot is between 1,000 and a million, but if you go over a million, then you're not getting what you're looking for. It's okay to do the generalized, but mix them in with some things that are going to get you those followers because the hashtags get you followers if you use them right. Right. Okay, folks, we have five minutes left. We have five minutes left. Hold on one second, Mitzi, one second. Would each of you for 20 seconds like to say one more thing so we can get some questions from the audience that we haven't covered yet? that you think is the most important thing we haven't talked about uh, that you want to share with everyone? Beautiful images. Do not post unpretty things. <laughs> Don't do it. And try to have the photo look like kind of somewhat professional. You know, take 20 of them, like edit it, filter it, maybe come up with a filter for yourself. Because really, at the end of the day, I mean, how many split seconds do you give someone's account before you decide if you're going to follow it or not? It's so fast. You know instantly. You go, fwing, no. So if you've got a bunch of like random stuff that you're posting, like stop. Think that, decide how you want that platform to work for you and put that out. And that, you know, in the beginning I was posting lots of like pictures of people and this and that, random stuff, and I might think it's pretty, but if I'm looking for a designer, am I looking for someone who's posting a lot of fashion and cupcakes and jewelry? You know, because in the beginning I was posting all these things that I liked, and then I realized, wait, that's totally... No, you know, I need to post more stuff that's related to what I want people to come to me for. So just think about the content. It's really important. Band hashtags. Look those up. I mean, there, there are a ton of them, but know the majors and don't post them because that will kill uh, the algorithms for you. Um, as well as on stories, I do have a tip. Because you know you can only you only have so many seconds on your stories. There's an app called Cut Stories, and you can go in and you can you can do your videos on whatever video app that you use, and then put it into Cut Stories, and then put it into Instagram, so that you're not always having to stop and then re-video and then stop and then re-video. Um, and I just keep on saying story, story, stories. Y'all get more stories out there. It's going to help. Um, I would say just. It's easy to kind of second guess if you have growth and your growth slows. You think you're doing great. You look at somebody else who has a bazillion doing better. Um, to me, the one thing, all the, the, the stuff that goes on behind Instagram that we can't understand algorithms, like the one thing I understand is good content. And so if you just keep creating good content, 
that has got to be, in the long run, the best thing. So if you're putting, work, if you're creating content that you feel proud of, keep just keep doing that and not get overly hung up in all the. I've read so many articles, and I'll read one that's one way about how to grow your Instagram, and the next night I'll read one that says the one thing you shouldn't do is that whole article I read the night before. I'm like, screw, darn it! But the thing that's not a question to me is just keep making good content. If you're pr if, Make sure you're still proud of your posts, you know, however, whatever that means for you. And I would say the other helpful thing, just about like the dog, not by, when not breaking the Instagram, you think you're going to break it, Instagram, is notice through your post what people like. Like you said, you know people appreciate. They don't want to see an up close of your book, a coffee table book. And so that's kind of an interesting thing to look back, just to pay attention. Like, why did that not get any likes consistently? these do and these don't I think that's a that's a really that is direct data specific to you from your followers so I think that's really helpful Thank you. Um, my little wrap-up would be that it's it's a tremendously effective tool and use it and so the question that I ask myself at the beginning of it and in any business related item is what do I want you to do now that I've shown this to you. What do I want you to do with my Instagram page? What do I want? And and I want I want to use my Instagram as a portfolio to grow my design business. I also want it to help legitimize me in the industry as an influencer, which leads me to brand collaborations and licensing and all of those sorts of things. But as you're doing it, before you curate what your page looks like, ask yourself what you want. What are you trying to tell them? What is your message? What is your voice? What does your page look like? And, and, and then you can figure out how to communicate that. But know what you're saying before you start to just kind of splatter. Yeah, this is a very sharp tool, and you can have direct access to your client base if you use it well. Yeah, and my, my last, uh, not that it matters, but my last, uh, thing that I want to say before I get to Mitzi's question is our kickoff question is um, if you've been following Mark Zuckerberg's testimony in Washington, he answered a question given to him by a senator that said, can everyone determine who will see their content when they share it and make sure that those people see it? And he said, yes, Senator. And in essence, he lied under oath because you cannot control who will see your content on Facebook or on Instagram. There are algorithms at work. When algorithms go to work, it eliminates serendipity. When serendipity is eliminated, interesting things that break you out of your information bubbles and your life and your business contacts disappears. That serendipity is gone. When you walk through market here and you have a list of things you're doing for different projects and vendors you're going to see, you stop and you look left and right, and you see things, and it develops a sensibility and opportunities and business. You must be careful to, that you do not leverage your entire world and business success on any one single social platform. Because like the company Little Things, if anybody heard about them, the darling of the internet marketing strategy, they went bankrupt and shut down after Facebook changed their algorithm two months ago to eliminate content from publishers, they lost 75% of their web traffic. So the instant somebody decides something at a platform, you are impacted. And you must always consider this. What you heard today was exactly how to work the algorithms and how to maximize it. So these guys give you an amazing, amazing look into their world. So thank you very much for that. Right. We, have a, we have time for like two or three questions. So Mitzi. Okay, thank you, Adam. I wanted to know two quick things. Is there a time that you post that is more effective? And secondly, I've heard pros and cons all over the board about mixing your personal photos, like Natalie with Scarlett, um, dogs are lovers, but uh, is that a no-no or do you do both or what? I post it around 8 a.m. in the morning. I only post one time a day, and usually it's at 8 a.m. Central Time. But I know all of us will probably have a different answer for that. But Anybody different? It, I do it whenever I feel the spirit moves me. But I know not. I, I hear um, like 9 in the morning can be a good time. 
3 in the afternoon and 9 at night. I hear that Aaron, consistently. Do you have a on that? Uh, I post whenever, but I think if you're trying to use Instagram to grow your business, just take it easy on the personal stuff. You know, you still the people following you want to know you're a real human and like celebrate lovely things or milestones, but just don't overdo it. I don't need to see every cookie that's coming out of the oven because that'll make me unfollow you. Put that in stories. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Second yeah. question, and you have the third question. Go ahead. Sure yeah, uh, the, the question was, business or personal, what do you recommend? Well, Instagram. I switched to a business Can you use a mic? Can you use oh, a mic? Sorry. I switched to a business account a couple of years ago, and some people will complain. I don't know enough about how the, in, the um, algorithm's working for or against me to be personal or business. I do know that I like the analytics of business, so I can see who my following is. I can see, Miss Mitzi, what time of day to post, because Instagram tells me when my followers are looking. So for each of us, individual time, that's, that's what works for me is very early in the morning, and I have stronger days um, of the week. Wednesday's a really high day for me. Sundays are very low for me as well. So if I have a killer picture that I cannot wait to show you, I'm not going to show it to you on Sunday. So I, I look at my analytics that they offer to me, and I, and I use it to my best advantage okay, if okay. I can. Last question. Um, my question is, Yes, for yes. sure, you must. Th that yes, is you your do. home base on the web that nobody can take away from you. If you don't, it's weird. Right. And you don't. And you don't feel legitimate. Yeah. yeah. You you feel like a. Yeah. Yeah. You're not weird. It's just weird. No. You're like, what? Why? Why doesn't I'm she sorry? have a website? You know. You can say one last thing. I'm gonna say one last thing. Everybody, go, anybody, go. It's good because we should be done. But. Um, I, d I don't feel like I said enough about that. I, my Instagram automatically goes to my Facebook, um, and it is a lot to kind of manage both. But I will say, as far as it's different, like Instagram, I feel like is more likely to be other designers, brands, maybe design lovers. My Facebook tend to be like the cute ladies in my church who see my post and are like, we didn't know you did wallpaper. And I'm like, okay, what do you think the designer, like, you know? Or I saw you redid that bathroom. You know, Bob and I are about to add on. So, and I'm, and I'm not king when I say that. As far as real, concrete, working, cash-paying projects, it actually more probably comes for me from Facebook. Interesting. Um, and the demographic in Facebook is the, like, the sweet spot for money is women in the age of like, I think it's 40 to 65, right now have the most powerful buying power and are most likely to and have the available funds and are making those main decisions in their homes in our industry. So don't, t don't take for granted Facebook. And actually, you know, they're more likely to be on Facebook. It used to be like my son was on Facebook. Now Nana's on Facebook sharing pictures of my son to other Nana's on Facebook who then see my wallpaper. I mean, that's true. So don't, don't discredit Facebook. Thank you very much, everybody. I, we'll be around if you want to ask any more questions.